All right, let's talk something different. Let's talk about knots for, for a second instead of just hands. So traditionally, when we uh, try to tie knots, we often uh, try to follow the complex geometry given by the knots. And many knots that are pretty uh, complicated. But this is not the best way for us to actually accomplish those tasks. That is not how we tie our shoelaces. We never just uh, tip, uh, drag the one tip of the string and follow whatever the shoelace looks like. So it, so it suggests there are different ways we can uh, do the same task. And how do we identify those situations? Please use the mic because we OK. Sure. Um, so how can we identify those situations? This is a, uh, promotes one in interesting challenge with knot tying is that when we, uh, there are many different configurations for the same knots. And sometimes we do not know which is the best. Look at this 10 different configurations. They all are the same knot. If it were me, I would definitely choose to tie the, the one on the lower right. I would, wouldn't choose anything else. But how would we know? In this work, obviously we are not claiming to get any knot and finding what is the simplest form to perform to manipulate. But there still have some insights that for different, configuration, uh, for different configuration, different geometry of the same task, it is sometimes easier for us to accomplish some geometry, some task. And can we sometimes find the appropriate geometry for us to accomplish if that doesn't change the outcome? So be specific about knots. What are knots? Look at the lowest level. The knots are a sequence of string intersections. Show on the uh, top right. When you look at some stru structure like this, the first thing should pop in your mind is, this looks familiar. And indeed it does. We, uh, we often encounter structures like weaving that is also a sequence of string intersections. And we all know that weaving can be arranged very quickly if we're using a loom. The loom arrange all the warps that are vertical lines, as shown in this uh, picture, by spanning them, forming a wedge. And then we attach the string to a shuttle and let the shuttle move on a straight line to arrange all the wefts. Despite the lar large number of uh, string intersections, the whole street of weaving can be arranged really fast by using only a few simple uh, uh, trajectories of the shuttle. However, this is not true for knots. Traditionally, when we tie knots, we often follow uh, every time this string over the other or under the other, every time follow the same uh, specific geometry given to us and do regresses. So can we find some commonality between those two things? They are, look very similar. And indeed, we can. Sometimes, we can do very simple manipulations to tie some knots that are not so obviously can be done. And this is true that for arbitrary knots, we can always find some section of the, the knot that is analogous to the warps of the weaving, so that we can, that we can always prearrange all of those without performing any complex maneuvers. If you follow this, uh, the same knot I showed earlier, from the start, you can see I can just uh, lay, on the, lay down the, all these strings in sequence without any regrasping. The first the three crossing, first all on the lower layer, then all on the top layer, just like ice cream machine that you are, you are using. Then, after we have this basic structure, we can then insert the rest of the crossings, like a weft, just like using the shuttle. So how do we find those verbs and the wefts on a given knot? So we start with this text-based description of the knot, what we call Gauss code. And in this, in this uh, code, we use each number to de denote a crossing, like a string intersection. And we use a superscript to indicate whether this string is on top or on the bottom at this specific uh, moment or a specific location. And then we start to remove the crossings as part of the web, which first need to choose a direction if I'm going from the left to the right or going from the right to the left. In this specific example, we choose to go from the right to the left, and then we see the first uh, crossing we encounter is five minus. 
And I choose to remove it because the crossing to the left of it is 8 plus. They have a different superscript. And we rec when we recognize this, we can say, OK, this is a part of the left. I can continue to remove it. And I can repeat this process until I, I, I see two crossings consecutively have the same sign, same superscript. Then we go into the substructure of works. Of course, not, many, uh, not all the nodes just have one left. So this, uh, you, if you repeat this process recursively, you will get, find all the substructure of weft and warps. But this is, not, uh, this is still not easy. Just finding the weft is not providing us with any simple solutions to how we arrange these knots. The trick is, we have prov proved that if we can find a single weft, this weft can always be arranged on three lines. Now, I think I do not need to specify why we prefer straight lines over anything else. If we have a straight line, we can do very simple things with the robot to arrange the, uh, arrange the knot. Of course, all of this information we, are, we get is from the text-based description of the knot. The text-based inf information sometimes or always are get from the geometry by humans. They are gathered a long time ago. And using those information, we arrange the geometry, we rearrange them, find the perfect way for us to arrange them physically. And this is me using a Da Vinci robot arm to arrange the same knot following the con uh, configuration we showed earlier. Unfortunately, I have to cheat a little bit because uh, as the previous speaker talked about, friction is always a problem and uh, we don't know when they are gonna happen. After the arrangement first, uh, first part, the arm can just reach in, do a straight line, pulling motion, and we can get a knot. This, not only just a straight line motion, involves only one regress to arrange this knot, which has eight crossings. If we, traditionally, if with a knot with k crossings, we often need to perform k, uh, around the k different regress to get, uh, to get over a string uh, at the bottom because the topological issues. But this, this arrangement looks very bad. There's a lot of up and downs and we have to get around. Can we actually arrange all the verbs on the same level? We actually can. But when we do that, we need to add some extra uh, imagination to the movement for the gripper. So the weft is no longer a straight line but a actual wave motion. Goes up and down and wave. Of course, this is not perfect. Robot can fail. And even though we are not using any vision feedback because the string are following the shortest path, we know their pre-configurations, this has some failure cases. But this kind of a weaving straight line motion is perfect for humans to uh, perform. So it's actually easier for us and robots to work together to actually arrange different knots, even the knots that we have never seen before. The robots lay out uh, the complex uh, geometry that is computed by the algorithm, and the humans just wave along a straight line without even need to know what a knot it is. The same procedure will also be useful for humans to learn how to tie complex knots. For example, this is called a river knot that has 25 different crossings. And by learning this trick, <coughs> I'm able to arrange this knot very quickly. In a matter of, I think I did this in 15 or 20, 20 seconds, rather than like 12 minutes the first time I did this. So this is a, a huge difference. The same procedure can also be used in untangling knots. One of the most uh, pr uh, pr problem in untangling knots is friction. But as we all know, along the straight line, if the string is all aligned on a straight line, if we pull it, the friction should be much less than if it's curved and wrapped around other string. So we can use the same procedure 
to find all the wefts, align them on a straight line, and then put them just along that straight line. Pardon me for because of the, the, the ugly looking of the devices. As you can see, if we take this, remove this pin, and we get the knot untangled. Of course, there's still some problems with this approach. We got all this information, we, the algorithm, everything we do is based on this text-based information called Gauss code. However, uh, with the same knot, there are many different possible Gauss code. If, if you're familiar with knot theory, this is called knot invariation, which is, has been bothered mathematicians for a very long time. So we cannot solve that. We only can uh, use our algorithm based on the simple Gauss code input. Also, this approach, even though it simplifies our approach to arrange knots through the manipulation, it is indeed change the geometry. Sometimes that change is not desired by the users. Also, you can see in the, in the uh, experiments, I cheated by uh, uh, loosening the string to reduce the friction. Maybe we can do that automatically. Can we detect those things? And many additional fixtures, rods, are used in those experiments which uh, other users may not prefer. Then in the entanglement case, we program uh, pre program the motion to show uh, to uh, uh, do a pr proof of concept. But the problem still remains. The entangling is not untying. When it's loose, a lot of things we can do to actually untangle knots. But what if the string is, uh, is taut? If the, if the knot is taut, there's really little we can do. So that's all. Thank you very much. A question from Chris. Where'd you go? Oh, there you go. Come from behind. So I was wondering. Uh, I, I I don't know much about the area of knot tying, but uh, you know, whenever I'm untangling a knot, um, yeah. it tends out, it ten, I, I tend not to know what the structure of the knot is. Yes. I was wondering if there's been any work in, first of all, understanding from sensor data what a structure of a knot is, um, and also perhaps with some uncertainty about the Gauss code of, of a given knot, uh, would you be able to, for example, uh, minimize the number of expected grasps to untangle it? So currently there's a uh, very little work on untangling knots, but recently there are people started paying, paying attention, but all of those are based on loose knots. If it's a loose knot, yes, we can uh, identify all the crossings using advanced uh, vision or other uh, perceptions to get the information what knot it is, and then we can learn the Gauss code as uh, suggested and uh, learn about how many grasps we can do. But once the knot is taut, is crammed in the, into a ball, there is a lot of occlusion. Even you scan it in 3D, you may not know what knot it is. So that's going to present a lot of a challenge. Uh, if we know what knot it is, maybe we can see some patterns and uh, start to identify those webs and do some clever thinking or clever manipulation, very precise manipulation that is way beyond what we have uh, currently done, to actually un uh, untie it. But if it's totally unknown, uh, I'm not sure how to do that. So considering, uh, continuing on that theme, yep. let's suppose that we have a knot that we don't know the Gauss code because it's partial occlusion. Yep. Is there any technique that might be able to, to search over a set of Gauss codes that might have a partial structure in common, and then maybe you could figure out a single pull motion that would untangle any of the possible knots? So there is a possible, but uh, first, uh, there is a database of Gauss code, but uh, that, uh, that database is unlimited. So for even a single knot with a fixed number of uh, crossings, there are, could be infinite different uh, perturbation of the geometry so that every perturbation gives you a different Gauss code. So 
but that number may not be unlimited, but if you consider all the possible knots, this, this database becomes unlimited. Uh, but the, the, idea, the good point about this approach is the algorithm, if we know the partial Gauss code, we observe a partial of the knot and uh, isolate partial of the Gauss code, we can try to just deal with this partial first and try to untangle this uh, known part first. Basically, just to tr uh, untangling the known weft part first to reveal the, uh, uh, the warp parts and then find the next part, what I know next, and eventually maybe be able to uh, untie the knot. But this might be interesting uh, uh, to explore next. We currently haven't considered, what about partial knots? Great, thanks to Wei Zhu and to all the